Boys and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is how to terraform Mars with lasers. I like how it, <laughs> they just wrote it in capital letters with lasers. This is the channel Khosgazar in a nutshell. Another Khosgazar video and another about terraforming certain planet, uh, sort of Venus one, I think. Was there a Mars one before this? I don't know. But yeah, obviously when it's about space, uh, I automatically love it. This by Khosgazar, so of course it's gonna be great. So yeah, how to terraform Mars with? La I'm I'm gonna guess here that they are gonna melt the ice caps, right? And introduce oxygen in that way, right? But I'm pretty sure there's gonna be more complexity to it than that. So it's gonna be fun watching this because this is surprising. Like just lasers, you can just use lasers to terraform it. But what about the magnetic field? What you gonna do about magnetic field? Mars doesn't have a magnetic field, right? So without it, even if you can terraform it and create some kind of a, you know, atmosphere and something that that would just you know basically run away because you need a magnetic field to protect it. Otherwise, all the radiation will fuck up the atmosphere. So let's watch it. Remember, if you like my reaction, follow and subscribe. So I know which type of videos to do tomorrow. I'll look because there's any science topic basically. Uh, I've done quite a few of them. So check out the link in the description. There you'll find it. And yeah, let's watch it. Mars is a disappointing hellhole lacking practically everything we need to stay alive. It looks like we'll only ever have small crews spend a miserable time hidden underground. Yeah, capsules. Except we could terraform it into a green new world. But to solve the planet's problems, that we first need up. to make it worse and turn it into oceans of lava with gigantic lasers. This isn't a far-fetched science fiction tale. Terraforming Mars is possible on the kind of timescale our ancestors built great monuments in. If humanity solves some of its pressing problems and ventures into space to expand into the solar system, this may not be that far off. Okay, so how do we terraform Mars quickly? Well, it's complicated. Yeah, by the way, we would need extreme power just to use lasers. So this is gonna be in future, like he says, in centuries after. And I like to think by then, even with some other means, I hope we can terraform Mars, right? Because we don't have energy to shoot lasers like that right now, right? It's gonna take centuries, like he says. <laughs> you know, not okay, it would take, uh, I guess, decades just to get that power and it would take centuries to terraform it, but still, it's a distant thing. I, I've, you know, I think that even before the lasers can be a thing, that, you know, that kind of powerful lasers, we can terraform Mars. I don't know if somebody's gonna do it or not, but I think there are ways. But yeah, this is a fun thing with lasers. It's awesome that one just lasers can do it. Mars is dry and has no soil to grow anything. Its atmosphere is too thin to breathe or protect us from radiation, giving you a high risk of cancer. So to turn it into a new home for humanity, we have to give it a proper atmosphere similar to Earth's. It should be made of 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen, and a tiny bit of CO2 at an average temperature of 14 degrees Celsius and under one bar of pressure. We have to create oceans and rivers, and then the ground has to be weathered into fertile soil to host living things. Then we need to install a biosphere on the surface and prevent it all from being undone by installing protective measures that can stand the test of time. It is difficult, but a big laser makes it a lot easier. Challenge 1. The Atmosphere Some 4 billion years ago, Mars had a nice... Yeah, I think we know uh, how life kind of started, right? We still haven't figured out why there is life to begin with. So right now we just have a ballpark idea of what conditions makes life, right? So if those are accurate, yeah, we can definitely create biosphere and everything. Nice oxygen-rich atmosphere and was home to vast oceans and rivers. It held onto it for several hundred million years before it got blown away. Ultraviolet rays broke down the atmospheric gases and then the oceans until they were swept away by solar wind. Today, Mars is a dry, barren wasteland. Luckily, a sizable portion of the water is frozen in deep reservoirs and in the polar ice caps, enough to create a very shallow ocean. And enormous amounts of oxygen are bound as minerals in the Martian rocks, like the oxygen in the iron oxides that give the planet its rust red color, as well as carbon dioxide in carbonates. Damn, okay. To free these gases, we need to reverse the reactions that lock them away by using thermolysis, which occurs at temperatures as high as on the surface of the sun. Yeah. In short, we want to melt the surface of Mars. The best way to do that would be to put lasers in orbit, aiming their beams down on Mars. The most powerful laser today is the Eli NP, able to produce beams of 10 petawatts of power for a trillionth of a second. 
To melt Mars, we need a laser twice as powerful that runs continuously. The easiest way is to use a solar-pumped laser that can be powered directly with sunlight. At its core are metal-infused glass rods that absorb energy and release it as a laser beam. If we build an array of mirrors in space about 11 times the size of the United States, we can focus enough sunlight onto them to melt Mars. Yeah, I was about to say that like that is not enough, but yeah, this whole umbrella of things, yeah, this would be definitely enough energy. Man, I love this. In advance, when if, as our science become advanced and advanced, we don't need anything, right? Even the sun energy is enough. And it's solar energy, like you create this kind of a umbrella type of thing, solar panels, and that will feed all the energy. Let's do it. As the lasers hit the surface, about 750 kilograms of oxygen and some carbon dioxide emerge from every cubic meter of rock melted. If we are efficient, our lasers only need to melt through the top 8 meters of the surface to get enough oxygen. It would look terrifying. The skies would be shrouded in storms, while the ground would glow red hot, crisscrossed by currents of lava. Tireless laser beams sweep over the landscape, leaving trails too bright to look at. And Matt Damon After is screaming. Pass, the ground no, don't cools do that, I'm quickly. here. A strange snow falls. The ashes from all the elements that solidify as they cool down, like silicon and iron. Mm. Mars is still a cold planet at this point. A happy side effect of this inferno is that all the water in the polar ice caps and even deep underground rises into the sky as hot steam, forming clouds that rain down over the entire planet. They would wash out the nastier gases from the atmosphere like chlorine and carry away harmful elements that accumulated on the surface. In the end, they would form shallow oceans, saltier than on Earth. Mm. We might need to do an extra cleanup afterwards. It would take about 50 years of continuous lasering to create our oxygen atmosphere. 50 years of lasering, we could damn. use this opportunity to dig deeper in some places to create the basins for salty oceans or rivers and spare some landmark features like Olympus Mons and Valles Marineris. We're not done. Oh though. God, imagine the power to have to, like, you know, imagine like many centuries later, there is a civilization already on the Mars, right? People have been living there for a long enough time already. And some kid asked like, how, how, how was this, how, how did this, this valley came to be? How did that mountain came to be? Uh, we did that shit, right? <laughs> in Earth, everything is natural. But in Mars, you can literally mold Mars into valleys, right? You can create your own Grand Canyon, but even grander, right? Just use laser, just, you know, you know sculpt it, I guess. The resulting atmosphere is nearly 100% oxygen and only 0.2 bar. It's hard to breathe and very flammable. flammable. Yeah. To make it's it similar ridiculous. to Earth and a lot safer, we need to add a lot of nitrogen, which Mars is sadly lacking. We have to import it. The ideal source is Titan, a large oh, moon Titan, of Saturn, yeah. covered in a thick atmosphere that's almost entirely nitrogen. We just have to move 3,000 trillion... Oh God, this is so good. He's using laser uh, to you know, carve out Mars and create this atmosphere. He's importing things from Titan. If this project comes to be, it would be so awesome for the history books, right? Definitely in the future, like we, you know, we took resources from our own solar system and made Mars like Earth. Tons from the outer solar system to Mars. While that's not easy, it is doable. <laughs> to process that much of Titan's atmosphere, we have to construct giant automated factories oh on its surface, <laughs> powered by our lasers, to suck in the atmosphere <laughs> and compress it into a liquid. This gets pumped into bullet-shaped tanks, which a mass driver shoots all the way to the red planet, where they explode and mix with the oxygen. We've already been able to send individual missions to Saturn in just a few years. With enough resources, it should be possible to complete the task within two generations. Of course, it would be much more convenient to have nitrogen left over from terraforming Venus on the side. We explained this in detail in another video. So, about a century after the start of the terraforming process, we have a breathable atmosphere that has the right gases. Seriously, don't want to pause too much, but we, most countries, I guess, we live in democratic, especially the power countries, right, are democratic countries. And we are not going to help giant projects that span six decades in a democratic country. Because people get elected and they only care about their term. Anything spans beyond 10 years, they're going to, why would we give a shit, right? I mean, Apollo program was like ambitious as that, that was basically. However years, it, it got stressed out. But as soon as the threat of war went away, that, even that went away, right? Any project that's beyond somebody's uh, full term, right? They're like, fuck that. Why would I care? The next guy can deal with it or whatever. The next guy, we're going to think the same way. That's how Congress and Senate basically passes bill, right? 
that's why in i guess us there was a giant uh, you know hadron collider that, you know in texas i think it was about to be but they just cut the you know funding why would we give a shit that's a long term shit right that's why the, now the smaller one in you know switzerland is the thing otherwise the, the it would have been an even bigger one but yeah democratic countries are not going to be like yeah, if if, there, if this was still like emperor king type of thing, right, where they have dynasties, they'll be like, oh, my sons and sons will continue building this. My dynasty will build this. It will take a century. Yes, sir, I can see that. But democratic country is still going to be hard. If the liberated CO2 isn't enough to warm it up to temperatures we can stand, we just add some super greenhouse gases. Mars at this point resembles a black marble from all the cooling lava, spotted with growing oceans and red patches where the old surface remains untouched. It's still a wasteland, no better than a desert on Earth. We need to fill it with life. Challenge 2. Biosphere There you go. Installing a biosphere on a new planet is very difficult. Unexpected interactions between species or sudden diseases can destabilize it to the point of collapse. We would probably begin by seeding our young oceans with phytoplankton. Without competition, it would bloom rapidly, filling up the oceans yep. to become the bottom of an aquatic food chain. They can be followed by tiny zooplankton, then by fish, maybe even sharks and whales. If things go well, life in the oceans will thrive. Life on land is harder. Plants need nutrient-filled ground to sink their roots into, but most of the surface is the congealed remains of lava and ash. We could wait for thousands of years for water and wind to grind it down into finer sands, or try to do it manually. Laser. But we want to be quick, and we have a big laser. <laughs> Turning the beam on and off in rapid succession would cause the ground to quickly heat up and contract, which breaks it into smaller and smaller pieces. I don't know why this is funny to me. Like somebody going in front of a Congress or a Senate, whatever, I just say, we could wait thousands of years to, you know, make sure the soil is more fertile. Or I have a big fucking laser and everybody just cheers, people just jump up and down. Yeah, let's do this shit. Laser. <laughs> Add a bit of water and you get a sort of dark mud. Yeah. Into this mud, we can mix fungi and nitrogen-fixing bacteria. They're able to go. absorb nitrogen and convert it into nitrate compounds to feed plants. The first plants we want to bring are native to volcanic islands on Earth, since they're perfectly suited to the laser-blasted Martian landscape. Eventually, the enriched mud becomes the foundation for grasslands and forests. In Mars's lower gravity, trees can become very tall very fast. Their roots gather the nutrients they need and then dig deeper to turn more rocks into soil, forming a self-sustaining ecosystem. Yeah, that's so fucking At great. this point, we can slowly introduce more plant varieties, insects and animals. Not mosquitoes, though. The new biosphere needs to be maintained to prevent it from falling out of balance. If plants grow too quickly and absorb too much carbon dioxide, the planet cools down too much. If key species die out, we could see populations collapse faster than they could recover. On Earth. Yeah, that's the thing with this, right? I mean, you need massive servers of supercomputers just to calculate, like, how would scenarios play out? Uh, how many, if you miss out with species here and there, if some species become more dominant than other, how is the ecosystem going to work? Because, like he said just minutes before, like, it's really hard, right? You don't know what is going to, you know, just make everything worse. But yeah, at least you can make green, right? Look at that. It would be something, right? To see Mars green. Imagine that you're your telescope <laughs> in your in your roof or whatever. You check it, like, you see Mars a bit of green, like Earth type looking, like holy shit. Other species would move in to fill the void, but our Martian biosphere is not as flexible. It takes hundreds, if not thousands of years before Mars becomes a stable environment. But eventually, the planet will have the potential to sustain large human colonies. With air, water, and food available, we can finally call Mars, black, blue, and green, our home. A giant volcanic island in space. Will it last, though? Yeah, seriously, right? imagine thousands of years, right? In order for it to become a stable, you need thousands of years. Imagine that we do all this shit and we fucks off, right? We are not even in the same solar system because it's thousands of years. Who knows where science is going to go? How advanced we are going to get? Right? And we just, we became galaxy dominant. We go to some other solar system. We find something that is even better than Earth or our solar system. And say, fuck it, we're going to live there and just abandon planets because there are so many of them. I know Fermi Paradox is me. You just, you know popular planet after planet but what if that's not the case what if there's too many choices and you just choose where to live and colonies are in different planets and we just abandon entire so our solar system 
and some alien species come like, oh, look at that. Isn't that an awesome planet? Who did that shit? This shouldn't be here. Somebody did this and just fucked off. Challenge three, the long-term future. There is a problem we haven't addressed. Mars's core does not produce yeah, a go. magnetic field, so it doesn't have enough protection from solar radiation or cosmic rays. This becomes dangerous for the long-term health of Martian populations. So, as a final step, we need an artificial magnetic field. It doesn't have to be huge like Earth's. It just needs to deflect the solar wind enough so that it doesn't touch Mars. The easiest way is to construct a magnetic umbrella far ahead of Mars that splashes the solar wind to the sides. A big superconducting ring powered by nuclear facilities is all it takes. It would orbit at the Mars-Sun L1 point, keeping it constantly in between the Sun and Mars and protect the new atmosphere. And that's it. Terra yeah, but that would just protect it from our Sun, right? What about the cosmic rays that comes from outside of it? I know Sun protects us from that, right? Uh, for a whole art crowd thing, but still, th there are certain powerful rays that can push through, right? With not as intense power because sun does protect us, right? But uh, you know, if uh, this and that's magnetic it. thing only protects us from the sun and this is like completely open, rays can fuck up, uh, you know, lots of things. It could cause cancer or something. I guess you would need another small thing here to protect it from cosmic rays. Who knows? Terraforming Mars would take some work hefty resources and probably a century or ten but it would be the first time we've lived in a home designed and shaped solely by us and for us yeah that would be something the first step towards our future among the stars the first step that we can already take down here on earth is learning more about the physics and biology needed for such a project to help you with that we've created a series of lessons to build your fundamental understanding of these topics yeah people go to brilliant.org Pause this nutshell and support this channel because Guzad is awesome. Never came across any other channel that even come close to this. And I love he just, you know, I, it, obviously it's a team, it's not just one person. But they just sat around like, okay, what if we terraform Mars with lasers? Let's find out if that's possible. Researching, oh, look at that, is it possible? Let's do this. I love this video. Right, people, that was how to terraform Mars with lasers in capital letters. But channel, Kuz Guzad. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.